Now that we've seen how conditionals work, it's worthwhile to take a bit of time to think about how fallacies can happen with conditionals. Not only what they look like, but why they might seem compelling when they're actually invalid. And in this video, we're going to see the two main conditional fallacies, which are known as affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent. So there are two fallacies we're going to look at, and the first of these is called affirming the consequent. This happens when we take a conditional plus an affirmation of the consequent, in this case Q, and we falsely derive, I'm using this red therefore symbol to indicate a fallacious inference, so we falsely infer that the antecedent is true just on the basis that the consequent is true. Here's an example of an argument constructed along these lines. So suppose we come across the following statements. If Snowy is a dog, then Snowy has four legs. That's true. Snowy has four legs. Let's say that's also true. So Snowy is a dog. Well, that could be false. For instance, imagine Snowy's a cat. There are many other ways of being a four-legged animal without being a dog. So that's how affirming the consequent works. Now let's turn to denying the antecedent. So denying the antecedent works in a slightly different way, where from the falsity of the antecedent, we assume that the consequent is false. If Charlie is a dog, then Charlie is a mammal. Let's say that's true. Charlie isn't a dog. Let's say Charlie's a cat. So Charlie isn't a mammal. Well, no. Cats are mammals. So this, again, is a fallacy because it allows us to go from T to F. Just because the antecedent is false doesn't mean the consequent is false, too. So you might think, well, this is an obvious fallacy, and who would fall for such a thing? But the way that conditionals work in natural language can be a good deal more difficult. And there are instances in which we might confuse them with biconditionals. And that's often how these conditional fallacies can look deceptively valid. Recall that by the rules for biconditionals, P if and only if Q and P does entail Q. And likewise, P if and only if Q and not Q does entail not P. So if we mistake a conditional for a biconditional, we're liable to make this error. And often this happens when we assert a conditional in a context in which we might be entitled to assert a biconditional. So for instance, if it's August 1st, then it's my birthday. And it's not August 1st, so it's not my birthday. As it happens, these come out all true. While it looks valid, this actually has the form if P then Q, not P, therefore not Q. So it's actually a fallacy. Even though it's all T's, it doesn't follow the form in which if the antecedents are true, then the consequent must be true. So I think that this is partly why there are instances of these fallacious arguments with conditionals affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent, and they aren't always as obvious as these little toy examples we've given here. So it's worthwhile to be aware of these because you will find them out there and they can be a little bit trickier than the examples we've given just to illustrate how they work.